We've made this tutorial in collaboration with Chris from 2D Game Art Guru, a good friend of mine, and we decided to talk about art with both Inkscape, a vector tool, and Krita. In his part, he shows you how he created the Kraken you have on screen using vector tools, which are very efficient when it comes to building a character's silhouette. In this part, I'll take care of the shading, lighting, and take it to a finished level. Make sure you check out Chris's tutorial first as he shows how he designed the monster. The link's in the description. And now, let's get painting. The first thing I've done is organize the file a bit differently from Chris's export. The reason for that is I wanted to deform some bits like the arms, so I grouped them separately to use the liquify tool on them. That way I can modify their perspective a bit give the composition a tiny bit more energy and I can do that even later on after I've added some paint. That's for the arms but for the bottom part of the body, however, I've grouped the tentacles by layer and by color. As you can see, the lighter ones in the front are grouped together, then you have the four ones in the middle ground of the composition and the six ones in the background are in their own group. With that, it's very easy to paint inside of them all. For the ones in the background, as they all share the same color, I will use the same base shadow color. Using Krita's Inherit Alpha, I can group them, add a new paint layer at the top of the group, set it to Inherit the Alpha of the Tentacles, pick my color, I'll use something really dark, and with Preserve Alpha off at the top, I can now paint shadows on every single tentacle. I use the same principle for all of the character while painting. Sometimes I group them together, like the eyes, for example. I'll paint both at the same time. For the two larger tentacles, it's going to be a bit different though. To get a sense for the lighting, I'm adding a layer at the top. Again, it's inheriting the character's alpha, and I'll paint broad strokes just to see which direction would work best. With the multiply blending mode, you get a shadow effect, and you can play around with the opacity. It's a trick you can use to get a sense for the final composition, although it tends to be a bit dirty as well. The light could come from the top or it could come from the bottom and give it a more dangerous look. With some rim light, we can crank up the contrast a little more and make the face of the monster pop. I'll keep a copy of my sketch as a reference, maybe above it, and remove my blocking. Think of what we just did as a thumbnail. We'll keep it around as a reference, lock it to. Then we have the clean character to work on and polish a little more. The biggest challenge with a stylized creature like this one is to find its form, especially when it's made by someone else. When you define the silhouette of the creature by yourself, you're going to think about the form as you make it. I've had to take some design decisions here about how the eyes fade from round to spikes. It's, it's harder than it might seem and it takes a bit of time to render. I cannot stack as many layers as I'd want to make every single element. Like if I try to put 300, 400 layers in the document, it's going to slow down. In another program, I might have used many layers and built up the shadows with special blending modes. Instead, I am trying to use a limited amount of layers and to paint stuff by hand. The most important part is to establish the big picture, to get the values right for the majority of the body. That's why I'm going to all the tentacles, darkening them, because they'll be mostly in the shadows, and I'll add some highlights later on, maybe a bit more shade as well. To reproduce the value composition you can see at the top, the character's face in a game is the most important part. It's not always the case if you're doing a comic or something like that. Something else in the composition might matter more. The different characters in your game, however, have to work individually. 
they have to be beautiful by themselves, then work well in the context of the game. The character's face gives it its personality, so that was very important to focus on. Especially with the light coming from the bottom, it has to pop super hard. You have those big gold eyes that really shine in front of the player, and you have those sharp teeth that has to be clearly visible to show it's an enemy. His larger tentacles do have some clothes as well. Because of these spikes, they are similar to the head and the mouth. That's why I decided to reuse the color to let the player know that those two parts are dangerous. You want to make the colors as meaningful as possible. Note how we're using only two colors here. There's the body of the character that's mostly blue, then the eyes and the bottom of the top tentacles are yellow. The blue is for the body, and the yellow and the white are for the dangerous parts. That's why in the mouth you have a bit of yellow too, you have a little bit of glow. My process might seem a bit erratic. I jump around a lot and I rotate the canvas all the time. I also zoom in, zoom out, but I'm always keeping track of the big picture. I have the navigator in the top right corner. It's there to remind me of what the composition looks like. For the most part, I still follow the broad steps of the process. I've blocked in my lighting before I started detailing anything. And then, yes, I've detailed the face before everything else, but that's common when you are making game characters. You want to define their personality first to make that work, and then you can focus on the rest. At the end of the day, if you are short on time, the few elements the player will remember from such a character are the silhouette and the face. Chris took care of the silhouette, so the only thing I had to focus on was the face. The broad steps you follow are very important, doing the blocking before you refine anything. However, it's interesting to notice how important the details are. They make a huge difference. Without the details on the tentacles, the character looks like something is missing. It doesn't look like an octopus or a kraken whatsoever. So it's important to keep track of that when you are working, as you are moving forward, that you have to give it the time to make all those details before the character looks like something. Also, working in collaboration is super useful. Working with someone else's style is very common in the gaming industry, where you have to adapt to the team's style. So I invite you to do that with more experienced artists, if possible, people who have better drawing skills than you. That way you can learn from their work too. This is a painting made on a tight time budget, and you can see what matters the most, what I'm focusing on. First, the contact shadow. It's very important to give the character some depth. Then the broad details like the claws, the teeth, and the tentacles. I only added a few dots here and there to give the character a bit more texture at the end, but overall it's not very detailed. So you always want to focus on what defines the animal, the monster, the creature first. And only if you have the time, you can add those smaller details, keep refining for hours and hours. Always experiment a bit with the compositing, use the curves to enhance your value composition. And if you don't know what that is, check out the video in the description but also use color balance and some gradient in overlay mode or something like that to accentuate the perspective of your piece. Then, although I kept the various elements on different layers, at the end, I like to put a layer at the top and to manually paint some details in. When you're short on time, again, this is a good way to get the illustration out the door. Then, if you're working on a game, the better thing to do is to export your unfinished character to test it out in the engine, move on the next assets, and when you have time, later in the production, you come back to work on it. Again, if you're working in a team, it will depend on the size, it will depend on the project at hand. Often, you will have the time to focus on your art. Note that most of what I explain about the design process in art is also true when you're working on a story or if you're working on a game. The process is iterative in nature, you have to go through broad steps, you only fine-tune the details moving forward. That said, don't forget to go check out Chris's part if you haven't already. 
be creative, have fun, and see you in the next one.